Hey, this is Mario Formesco, and in this video, we're going to talk about when trademark infringement isn't infringement. So before we uh, talk about that, let's just do a quick uh, recap of what a trademark is. So trademarks are typically words, phrases, symbols, and or designs used as a source identifier for particular products. So think of like Nike, Apple, Google, or Amazon Basics, which are all registered trademarks. So while a trademark owner or a registrant has broad powers, those powers aren't absolute, meaning there's some limitations to it. And some of those limitations are, for example, the first sale doctrine, latches, acquiescence, and fair use. And in this video, that's what we're going to talk about is fair use. In other videos, we'll, we'll cover the other uh, limitations. So with fair use, there's two different types of fair use. One is descriptive fair use, and the other one is nominative fair use. So let's talk about the difference between them and how they'll help you out knowing the difference between these as an Amazon seller. So with descriptive fair use, it's defined as uh, the good faith use of a term, such as like a mark uh, used, by a, used by a third party, so not the trademark owner, to describe its goods or services. So when courts are evaluating this defense against trademark infringement, the descriptive fair use defense, what they'll consider is three elements. So whether the defendant used the trademark as one other than as a mark, two in a descriptive sense, and three in good faith. And I know that kind of sounds confusing, so let me just give you guys an example of uh, descriptive fair use. So we all know that Apple is a registered trademark, right? So however, a farmer who grows and sells apples is able to use the word or the t um, the mark Apple in his marketing, right? So he's using it, using the mark Apple or the word Apple in one, he's using it as other than as a mark, two, in a descriptive sense, and three, in good faith. He's not relating back to the Apple products. So this would be allowed and would be considered descriptive fair use, and obviously it wouldn't be uh, infringement. So another example would be um, Amazon. That is a registered trademark, right? So if someone has a tour guide business, they can still use the word Amazon to kind of describe their expedition to the Amazon River. That would all be called um, or covered under descriptive fair use. So there wouldn't be any infringement there. So the use of Apple by the farmer to market and sell his uh, actual apples and also a tour guide using the term app, uh, sorry, using the term Amazon to advertise his uh, tour business. Those would all be uh, considered descriptive fair use. So now let's move on to nominative fair use. So it's kind of similar, but there are differences. So with uh, nominative fair use, the definition is um, use. This use occurs when party A uses a trademark belonging to party B to refer to party B's product in a manner that is non-deceptive or likely to cause confusion. So it's got to be truthful. It can't be uh, deceptive and it can't cause confusion. And um, when courts are kind of considering this defense, the question really is, the real issue is whether defendant's reference to the trademark created confusion as to whether the trademark owner endorsed or sponsored defendant or defendant's product, okay? So one example would be a mechanic shop uh, claiming that it services Ford cars. Obviously, Ford is a registered trademark, but a mechanic shop can do that. They say, hey, we, uh, we service Fords, Ford trucks, whatever it is, right? So that would be considered nominative fair use. Also, um, Amazon sellers, you guys can make the claim, which I'm sure most of you guys are aware of, that your phone cases that you sell fit iPhones and Google Nexus phones. Again, iPhones is a registered trademark and uh, Google Nexus or whatever their phones are called. That's a registered trademark. So those are the two um, kind of branches of fair use. It's gonna be uh, descriptive fair use 
and nominative fair use. So now, I mean, how can you guys use this information? Um, some of you may receive letters, cease and desist letters, stating that you can't use this term because we've got a trademark on it, or you can't use, you know, another word that they've got a trademark on. So before you guys kind of respond to, the, to those letters and those cease and desist letters, kind of consider whether any of these two defenses apply, whether your use of that registered trademark was either descriptive or nominative, right? So those are two defenses. In the upcoming videos, we'll go ahead and cover the rest of those defenses, which is the first sale doctrine. That's going to be a longer video because there's so much more. While... Uh, the first sale doctrine is a defense to trademark infringement and an exception to trademark infringement. Even the exception has exceptions. So that's going to be a longer video and that's something we'll have uh, coming up in the near future.